I mean, you look back at his track record. He forced his way out of New Orleans. He forced his way from the Clippers. They left on bad terms. It was already said in the locker room, guys didn't like him as a teammate, as a leader. You go down to Houston with James Harden, who James Harden has been, you know, I played with James Harden for four years. He's one of my good friends. And he was one of the best guys to ever be around. The, one of the most unselfish guys. Uh, he, he was, he's one of the most encouraging guys. So if speculations are true that came out about a month ago about that James Harden put it on Daryl Moore to say, hey, it's either me or him. And all of a sudden, we see this blockbuster trade yesterday. Mm. Um, you know, it's time for CP3 to start looking in the mirror. Because sooner, I mean, it can't be everybody else. If I go out there and I got 10 to 20 people ready to fight me, it can't be all these 10 to 20 people fault. Sooner or later, it must be me. I must so, be the problem. So you don't believe it had, not the taking, tension had nothing to do with it? Huh? So you don't believe that, you know, there, it was said that the tension between Harden and CP3 had nothing to do with the trade, but you don't believe that, you're saying? No, he said, I, no, I he's not, saying he I, does believe that. that the, the yeah, I do, I do believe yeah. that. I no, do exa believe exactly, that because, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Yes, yes, for the simple fact that, I mean, if you just look at it, how they ended, and, you know, the, how they, they went at each other, I mean, it was, it was bad blood. And, you know, one thing about it is that CP is a Hall of Famer. I'm not taking nothing from Chris Paul. He's a Hall of Famer, but when you're getting in the heated battle with the franchise of the team, you're talking about Mr. Houston himself and James Harden, and and James Harden, if the speculations are true, that comes out and says to Dale Moore, hey, it's either him or me, and Dale Moore pull off this trade right here after they just signed CP3. So they acquired from. They gave him a major... Go Let ahead. me ask you this, man. Um, you've been in the league a long time, right? And you played right. with James Harden. And you've been a guy who's been on TV. You've been telling us exactly the way it is. And I really appreciate that about you. And for that matter, Ryan, mm. you played with Chris Paul. So I have to put it to both mm. of you guys specifically. I hear your rationale, Kendrick. If there's 10 guys you've been in a fight with, it can't always be about the other 10 guys. It's got to be about you at some point. You pointed to three right. organizations. New Orleans, L.A., and now Houston. And I've made the same arguments, Kendrick, about Jimmy Butler, you know, or Kyrie mm. Irving. You know, if, if it's mm. once, okay. twice, sooner or later, it's you, right? Right, so, absolutely. Uh, but I need to ask you specifically, both of you for that matter, what is it about Chris Paul? What are you saying the league is saying about Chris Paul so, and his personality? So, so I play with Chris, and here, here's the reality, and I do agree with everything that you said, Perk. He starts to weigh on you because Chris is such a, a basketball mm. intellect Whenever there's a play that happens on the floor, Chris is never wrong. Then the question there is accountability. Now, this isn't New mm. Orleans, Chris Paul, where he would go get you 30, 15, and 8 on a night-to-night -night basis, and that's a bad right, man. Right. Chris doesn't right, have the same right. energy that he used to, but his attitude has never changed. And that's yeah, what started absolutely. to wear on guys like Blake, DeAndre, everybody in that locker room. And then you get to a point where you go, man, I don't want to say anything to this guy or back, go back and forth with him because you know the power he has within the organization. But now that those mm -hmm. numbers are there, things start to weigh out. Can Chris Ball st Paul still play basketball? Is he a bad man? Yes, we're absolutely saying that. Now, Perk, weighing on James Harden because a lot of people, I want you to dig in onto this, and you talked about it. They say he's a All ball right. hog, he's selfish, he's statistically driven. How true is that? That's not true at all. Listen. This guy was averaging triple doubles. Not only, I mean, he was getting triple doubles all last season. Not only was mm. he putting up 50 and 60 points, but let's not forget, he was putting up these 50, I mean, 40, 50, 60 point triple doubles. So that means he was dropping off assists. Listen, James Harden make guys better. He's changed the game. And if anybody says any different, I don't know what game they're watching. He do not chase stats. He just plays the game the right way. He has changed the game of basketball just like so many others in so many different aspects of the game that we cannot sit up here and say that James Harden played for stats or Wait. he's not the, you know, the right leader or whatever the case may be because I've watched James grow, grow and he's grown to a great leader. He's came and changed his organization around. 
Shoot, just ask Clint Capella. He gets him about mm. 12 of his yep. 15 points yep. a game, period. So, I mean, well, so Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick think about Ryan that. answered. Ryan answered, but I do want your answer as well because we're going to be talking about where Chris Paul fits in, right? We're going to be talking about Miami. Right. We're going to be talking about who makes a deal for Chris Paul. Where does Oklahoma City move him? But anybody that's want, wanting or considering making a move for Chris Paul, they're going to want to know the answers to the questions I'm asking too. Absolutely. And I, and, and I heard Ryan's answer. I want to hear yours as, as well. What is the issue with playing with Chris Paul? Well, I hear the biggest issue is his ego. Um, you know, one thing I, I've learned from playing with a lot of superstars, I've played with a lot of future Hall of Famers, a lot of Hall of Famers. And uh, all of them. One, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, basically all of them. Too. But listen, one thing I've learned is that superstars are guys that can be held accountable. And also super superstars lead by mm. example. But the thing that I've seen about CP that – I've watched him. I've been on our other team, and I've been playing against him. Mm. I've heard him more uh, uh, get on guys more so than encourage guys. When you're a leader, you got to have that 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 fine line. When mm -hmm. to approach this guy, how to uh, talk to this guy, because everybody is different. And if you're a leader, you're supposed to know that. You're supposed to know, hey, when I was on OKC, I used to know I could address KD this way. I could come at him harsh between me and him because of the relationship we have. I know if I come at Russ this way, I may lose Russ for a quarter. But if I approach him this way, I know I'm going to get the best out of him. For mm -hmm. example, Serge Ibaka, we used to say, hey, man, we're going to throw the ball down to Serge to start the game because we know if he get going early, yep. he's going to give us nine to ten blocks a game. Uh, and he was doing that at one point in time. And I think, you know, I always preach this. Everyone don't have leadership skills. It's hard to be a leader. Just because you're the max guy on hey, most teams hey, doesn't, doesn't mean that you're a leader of a team. Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.